19th century, mankind developed a way to put burning fuel to work. It was used to turn water into steam. The expanding steam was used to push a piston, and the piston turned a crank. The shaft with the crank moved trains and boats, did farm work, and changed society completely. Steam engines were heavy and huge and needed a constant source of water. The piston and the crank themselves could be light and portable, but the external boiler and the fire were none too portable. Burning fuel to do work was a good idea. If only we could make the combustion take place internally. In this small internal combustion engine, there's a piston that can slide up and down in a cylinder. The piston is connected to a crank so that as the piston moves up and down, the crank can turn a shaft. At the end of the shaft on my end is flywheel, just a heavy wheel. Connected to the crankshaft is another shaft with bumps on it. The shaft with bumps on it turns at half the speed of the crankshaft. As that camshaft turns, the bumps are made to open a couple of valves at the top of the cylinder. The one at the back opens a passageway to the carburetor. The carburetor has a small nozzle and a pool of fuel. And as air rushes past the, across the top of it, it sucks a small amount of vaporized fuel with it. So. How does all this stuff do work? Well, as the piston moves down the cylinder, it creates a vacuum. One of the bumps on the camshaft is moved to push that back valve open, so air mixed with fuel rushes into the chamber. When the piston gets to the bottom, it starts back up because it's on the crank. But by now, the bumpy shaft has let the valve close, so the air and fuel mixture is just being squoze. At the top, a small spark from the spark plug ignites the air-fuel mixture. The reaction creates expanding gases that force the piston back down, adding power to the rotation of the crankshaft. Now, remember the flywheel at my end? It's heavy enough to keep the shaft turning, so the piston starts its travel back upwards again. Only by this time, the bumpy shaft has pushed the other valve open, so the exhausted gases get forced out here. The periodic explosions are enough to keep this whole thing spinning on its own. This is a general purpose engine. It's found in water pumps and generators. It's called a four cycle engine because there are four distinct operations. Sucking in the gas and air mixture, compressing that mixture, going bang, and exhausting the burned gases. The power that the engine gives is directly related to the amount of fuel that explodes in that chamber. There's a uh, small valve on the carburetor that controls the amount of fuel by controlling how much air the engine can suck. The speed of the engine is controlled by the exact timing of the spark that ignites the mixture. And the throttle control usually operates the carburetor valve and the timing together. A car engine is a lot like this one, except that it has multiple pistons that share a common crank. These things are the famous piston rings. They're made from springy metal and expand outwards to form a good seal between the piston and the walls of the cylinder. The bottom ring prevents oil from creeping up into the combustion chamber. Oil? Well, you betcha there's oil down here. Best way to describe how these parts fit is uh, perfectly. Without being well lubricated, an engine will just turn itself into scrap rapidly. This engine uses a splash method to oil all the parts. The bottom's full of oil, and a finger on the crank throws it around. Some engines, like the one in a car, use a pump to distribute the oil. There's a way to get rid of a lot of these parts. No. The two-cycle engine. The two-cycle has no valves, no camshaft, no oiling system. Instead, it has a bunch of carefully located holes and passageways. The carburetor is mounted down here in the base of the engine, in the crank casing. In front of the carburetor are some one-way reed valves. They work like this. Now, whereas the four-cycle engine does four different things one at a time, the two-cycle engine does four different things two at a time. Imagine that the piston's on its way up, compressing the gas mixture. The bottom of the piston is creating suction that draws in more air gas mixture below it. When the piston reaches the top of its travel, the spark plug ignites the mixture and drives the piston back down. But the new air gas mixture below can't go back through the one-way reed valves. Instead, it gets pushed up through a passageway right about here, if the engine weren't cut away, to the top of the piston, 
where it pushes the exhaust gases out of another passageway. The top of the two-cycle piston is shaped to direct traffic between incoming mixture and outgoing exhaust. On the next stroke, the entire operation repeats. The two-cycle engine has a further bonus. Since the air-gas mixture travels around all of the moving parts, oil can be mixed with a fuel to lubricate the engine. Now, outboard motor owners, stay seated. Everybody else, go grab a sandwich. Be ashamed to give this cutaway back without looking at some of the things that are unique to outboards. Outboards are just about all water-cooled, something to do with the abundance of water in their operating environment. The water pump is down here in the lake. This finned wheel is in an egg-shaped container that causes the fins to create little chambers that squeeze and unsqueeze, driving lake water up to the engine through this tube. Ah, look down here. This is your go-maker, forwards and backwards. Aren't you glad you stayed? A little knowledge is always better than the sandwich. Banana. I should get out of this business. <laughs>